Harrison with you, asking you this question. What if the famous LAPD were actually flying drones around and spying on the public without the public knowing about it? What if a billion and a half dollars had been given by Homeland Security to police departments to do things that you don't know about? Straight ahead. I've spent a decade taking a bite out of conspiracy theories, unraveling urban legends, and grappling with worldwide top secret issues. I've even racked up some of their awards, all while ferreting out the bottom line. Uh-oh. On all topics, controversial, bizarre, and taboo. Interviewing movers and shakers, agitators and muckrakers. But that doesn't answer my question. That is all I'm answering. With me, Carrie Harrison, as your guide. Harrison with you. This is, of course, Go Harrison, live streaming on a variety of different outlets, plus FMs up and down the west coast of California, east coast of the United States, and here and there in Europe. What about that DOD? That's Department of Defense. What about that LAPD, the famous LAPD, with the new weapons that they possess that you and I didn't know about? But there is one guy who knows a lot about it, and I have to tell you, shock and awe, as Rumsfeld would say, <laughs> was the state of me learning about this stuff. And let me introduce to you Hamid Khan. He is with the Stop LAPD spying coalition. Say that ten times quickly. <laughs> and you guys aren't kidding. They're spying the famous LAPD. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, LAPD is, uh, as they always talk about, being a model agency, and they say it in the sense that it serves people, but it's a model agency in exactly what surveillance, spying, and infiltration means. I mean, LAPD has a very long history, and we've been able to map that out going back to almost 1923, that LAPD's information red squads, uh, which were covert sections way before the FBI and way before COINTELPRO was in existence, which were based out of the manufacturers, out of Chamber of Commerce and yeah. funded by manufacturers and retailers associations. So, so LAPD has a very long and morbid history. Well, they do. And, and anyone who's been on the uh, backside of one of their batons or bullets um, may also bear witness to some of that. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Bill Clinton, his wife is running for president, famously. We know Absolutely. this to be true. Mm -hmm. In 1997, signed a defense authorization bill creating a marriage mm -hmm. between the Defense Department and the local cops. Absolutely. So this way, we now have tanks, LAUSD, that's the school system of Los Angeles, actually had a tank. Did I just say they had a tank? You, you're right. They, they had sure, a tank. Yeah, they sure now, if, as I understand it, because of your good work, they no longer have a tank. The surplus military equipment has been given by the Department of Defense to local law enforcement agencies for quite some time, but it was in the mid-90s that when uh, they created this section, 1033 program. Yeah. And what's really interesting and quite morbid, I would say, about that program is that when this surplus equipment is given, which could be anywhere from grenade launchers to rocket launchers to minesweepers, and imagine my mine sweepers on Hollywood Boulevard. Well, exactly. and mine sweepers in the school system. In the school I mean, system, it absolutely. Makes sense. Um, it, there's a condition that unless they are used within 12 months, they have to be returned. So, so the incentives are created to, to create conditions on the ground where this equipment is being used. What we are seeing increasingly, which is expanding rapidly as well, is how counterterrorism and counterinsurgency tactics are increasingly getting incorporated and codified into local policing. These are all tactics and programs that have been tested and tried on the battlefront. Um, predictive policing, that is becoming a big thing in the or United PP, States. Or PP, as they call it. Yeah. Predictive uh, policing. Predictive policing. And, yes. and th thanks to uh, UCLA, uh -huh. which has deep fingers in that, the, actually the chair of the anthropology department is responsible and is a co-founder of PredPol, short for predictive policing. One of the things we have are drones. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not talking Radio Shack for Timmy to take 720p video uh, from his bathtub or jerking off or whatever he's going to do with that. This, well, no, we don't know what the cops are actually doing with right. it, but what we do know is Seattle. Mm -hmm. Seattle had these $87,000 drones, and the people rose up and said, you know what, no thanks. Absolutely. You're not allowed to hover outside of my window and see what I'm doing. Forget it. So they rose up. So now the, uh, the Seattle cops have all these drones. So the law says they're not allowed to sell them for cash, but they gave them as a gift mm -hmm. to the notorious LAPD and our notorious police chief who said, big hairy drones, 87 <laughs> grand, yeah, baby. 
And then LAPD spun that in PR as a gift. It was a gift from a sister city. And um, move along, move along, there's nothing to see here. Well, they're seeing a lot, or that's the intent, right? And, and this is one of your big so initiatives. This was one of our big campaigns in May of 2014. They did receive these Dragonfly X6 drones through which they had bought through the Urban Area Security Initiative, which is a whole funding stream that the DA Department of Homeland Security has. Uh, so we immediately launched a campaign, uh, Drone Free LAPD, No Drones LA. And uh, up until now, we've been able to keep them grounded because uh, we filed for public records and what came back was that they're still sitting at the Inspector General's office. We are demanding that these drones be either uh, completely dismantled or sent back to the manufacturer. Uh, the issue is that LAPD claims that they're going to be for a particular purpose. They're going to be in cases of emergency, but, you know, mission creep is What's real. What kind of emergency So if there be? if there is uh, SWAT-like conditions, if basically where there's a standoff or there's hostage-type situations, uh. but then... Uh, I just mentioned SWAT that came around in the in the late 60s, um, but we've seen what happened with the, with SWAT, where initially the purpose was standoffs and hostage conditions. But now uh, there was a report last year that close to 70 percent of the SWAT deployment is on low level of uh, warrants, you know, for yeah. drug dealers. So, which means that uh, mission creep is a term that's used in sure. the military, that the original intent gets sidelined and then you keep, so you keep on picking it so up. So that would be somebody smokes a joint, you can launch a drone. Absolutely. Poof, done. And once you've done it once, you've set a precedent. Well, I mean, and we also have to uh, remember that last year in August of 2015, the state of North Dakota was the first state that passed a law that now police drones can be equipped with non-lethal weapons. So tasers, rubber bullets, tear gas, and various other things. And we know that these are not non-lethal. I mean, just in 2015, there were 47 deaths as a result of, uh, of tasers. Yeah. So, so that's exactly the direction that we are heading. So it's really the, the extensive militarization of the police. Mission creep is real. And obviously, there's a lot of distrust about the LAPD, which this is the second year in a row that they have murdered the most people of any police department in the country. Um, and then just last year's LAPD's own Inspector General audit showed that over 30% of these secret files identified individuals as black, over 82% were non-whites, and whatever gender was identified, 50% of them were black women. Well, it's very interesting given that the U.S. population um, certainly doesn't reflect those demographics. It Absolutely should be not. the other way around. It should be mostly white people or mostly this or mostly that, but oddly it never is. And and this speaks to yet a second level and we're going to talk about police body cams mm -hmm. right now, which in theory sounds great. The cops say, well we saw you doing this, we clobbered you, it's our word against yours. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's give them cameras, now it's on tape. Right. Great, that sounds good in theory, but that's not what we're looking at here. Absolutely not, and just in full disclosure, the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition published a 45-page report detailing why we reject the use of body cameras. The body cameras were supposed to be the silver bullet uh, for police accountability, but the body cameras are not looking on police officers. They are outward looking. So it's about a 130 degree angle mm -hmm. where they pick up all the all the all the footage. So it's not really on on the officers themselves. Um, secondly, uh, I think it's also uh, critical to know that how they are being used as well. So, for example, in in Los Angeles, uh, the LAPD, their policy is that based upon their own, and that's where the interfacing comes in, based upon their own facial recognition technology, yeah. all background footage can be used for evidence. So you and I could be, so the, so the police officer may stop somebody for taking footage with the body camera. We can be walking in the background. We are basically suspects as well in that footage. Based on the reasonable blah, 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 blah that you mentioned Observed earlier. Observed behavior, Wait, reasonably you, indicative. You come on the show. I forced you to sign a release form saying that we can actually use your image. Absolutely. But the police don't need a release form. No, if they don't. If you're trapped in their video, it is an implied release. So basically the argument is that it's a public space. Yeah. So you don't have uh, the protections of the Constitution when you're in public space. So this I'm sure Jefferson would have loved that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, with the LAPD, one of the other issues is that as far as the use of the body camera is that it, it's not, they, not only they recommend, but they require their officers to review the footage before they file their is report. Is that right? Yes. Before they file before their report. They file report. So the police should police the police to make sure that the police are self-policing. Absolutely. And, and something that we had said in the very beginning it's interesting that just last month or two months ago, Temple University mm -hmm. out of uh, Pennsylvania, they uh, came out with a report on body cameras stating that police shootings have gone up 
since the people have been they have been using body cameras and the reason w- they're saying is that now uh, because in pol- police killings a lot of them are in policy it's basically they have the license to kill so in essence the body cameras are now footage that justify the policy as well so so it's really a twisted concept where now we are looking at that it was supposed to be uh, officer misconduct but yet again what we are seeing is that it's being used and and what's also uh, your folks would be interested to know that when the Los Angeles Police Commission submitted its report on body cameras to the city council it was a 30 page report not there was not a single sentence about accountability it was all about how the city can reduce liability with the use of these body cameras. Oh, okay. So when you go to some of their manufacturers' website, like Vivu, uh, it says, for cops, by cops. Hamid Khan is with Stop LAPD Spying Coalition. And uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And, uh, you know, now I'm going to be uneasy um, forever. It's but about it's okay. power, not paranoia. That's the <laughs> power, whole not paranoia. <laughs> I like that. Thank you so much for your friends. down the west coast of California, east coast of the United States, and here and there in Europe. What about that DOD? That's Department of Defense. What about that LAPD, the famous LAPD, with the new weapons that they possess that you and I didn't know about? But there is one guy who knows a lot about it, and I have to tell you, shock departments to do things that you don't know about. Straight ahead. I've spent a decade taking a bite out of conspiracy theories, unraveling urban legends, and grappling with worldwide top secret issues. I've even racked up some of their awards, all while ferreting out the bottom line. Uh oh. On all topics, contra. Harrison with you, asking you this question. What if the famous LAPD were actually flying drones around and spying on the public without the public knowing about it? What if a billion and a half dollars had been given by Homeland Security to police? In awe, as Rumsfeld would say, (laughs) was the state of me learning about this stuff. And let me introduce to you Hamid Khan. He is with the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition. Say that ten times quickly. (laughs) And you guys aren't kidding. They're spying the famous LAPD. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, LAPD is, uh, as they always... Versal, bizarre, and taboo. Interviewing movers and shakers, agitators and muckrakers. But that doesn't answer my question. That is all I'm answering. With me, Gary Harrison, as your guide. Harrison with you. This is, of course, Go Harrison, live streaming on a variety of different outlets, plus FM's a 